Okay, hello. So this routine is definitely a little bit moderate. Uh, you will mm, sweat. <laughs> and this one is specifically for weight loss, but it's not like they're gonna just shed from you. Um, but you will build heat in the body. You will tone your muscles and hopefully that will rev up your metabolism a little bit. So let's get started. We are going to begin with sun salutations. If you're not completely familiar with sun salutations, I'll walk you through it. Also, um, when we breathe in yoga, this is very important, make sure you're breathing fully and deeply. And if you'd like to bring in your ujjayi breath, you may do that. Ujjayi breath is using the muscles of the throat to hold the breath back a little bit so that you sound a little bit like Darth Vader. So if you were fogging a mirror, that's how you actually breathe. And you exhale and inhale through the nose doing that. So you can try it. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but if you can do it throughout the practice, please do so. It'll definitely enhance your practice. I will try to remind you as well. Either way, I'm gonna remind you to breathe. So, we're gonna start in Tadasana, which is mountain pose. We're gonna start with arms up towards the ceiling as you inhale. And then you can swan dive as you exhale. Feet can be a little bit apart or together, your choice. Inhale halfway up till your back is flat. Exhale to the floor. Knees can be bent here if you're not very flexible. Don't worry about it. A lot of people don't talk about that, but you can. Inhaling all the way up. And exhaling into Namaste. Let's do that again. Inhale up. Exhale, fold forward, hinging at the hips, and keep the back flat as much as you can. Inhale, halfway up, till your back is flat. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up to standing. And exhale, into Namaste. One more time, inhale up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands into Namaste. One more time. Inhale, up. Exhale, fold. Inhale halfway. Exhale, fold deeply. Knees can be bent, don't forget, even a little micro bend is okay. Inhale all the way up to standing. Exhale into Namaste. So we're going to do this again with a slight variation, and now you'll really get warmed up, I hope. Inhale, hands up overhead. Inhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plant the hands and take the right foot back. Bring the knee down as you're exhaling. Inhale, the arms up and overhead. Exhale, forward. Plant the hands. Bring the left foot to meet the right. And we're going to be in plank right now. Generally, we exhale down. Now, if this is too much, you can bring the knees and exhale down this way. Otherwise, you're in plank. You're gonna come forward slightly and then bring the body down in one single straight line and then inhale into upward facing dog. Exhale into downward facing dog. In downward facing dog, breathe slow and deep. Make sure the hands are shoulders width apart. The head hangs loosely. You should probably be able to see between the feet. Knees can be bent here. You don't want the stretch to be in the legs. The stretch is in the back. So even if you bend your knees, then take the hips up and back to elongate the spine by pressing the hands into the mat. So it's like you're pressing the mat away from you. That is a better posture. 
than if you're like this and coming forward. So we want hips up and back. Whether the knees are bent or not, up to you, up to your body. But if you're feeling a lot of tightness in the back of the legs, just bend the knees. And then from here, on your next inhale, you're going to look up and bring the right foot to step. Lower the left leg. Inhale the arms up overhead. Exhale, hands come back to the mat. Left foot meets the right. Inhale halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up to standing. Exhale, namaste. One more time. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Inhale halfway. Exhale, plant the hands and take the left foot back. Bring the knee to the floor. Inhale, now you're using the strength of your legs here, so you are pressing both legs into the mat to support the body. Exhale, bring the hands, plant the hands. Right foot meets the left. Into Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. From here, breathe. It's a little bit of a resting pose when you've been doing some moderate work, like the sun salutations. You can usually take three to five breaths. On your next inhale, go ahead and look up. This time we're gonna take the left foot forward. Plant the right. Inhale the arms up overhead. Exhale, bring the hands back to the mat. Bring the right to meet the left as you complete the exhale. And then inhale halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up to standing. Exhale into Namaste. Hopefully you're warming up by now. We're gonna keep going. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, plant the hands. Come back into a plank pose. So while we're here in plank pose, I'm gonna have you hold this for a little bit. This strengthens the abdominal muscles, which we can all use. Strong core muscles are great for the back. So we want strong core muscles no matter what. Just keep holding it. Keep breathing slowly, fully. And your gaze should always be forward here. You should be looking past the mat. We don't want to let the head drop in plank pose. And then from here, just push back into downward facing dog. Breathing fully and deeply, using the ujjayi breath if you brought it into your practice today. And then inhale and take the right leg up behind you, bend the knee, and open up the hip a little bit so that you're bringing the knee towards the ceiling. But don't twist the upper body. Let the upper body keep facing the mat. From here, square the hips, and as you exhale, bring the knee towards your left elbow. As you inhale, take the right foot back up and then bring the knee as you exhale to the right elbow. Inhale, the leg comes back up. And as you exhale, bring the knee back underneath and plant the foot next to the right hand. From here, the distance between the feet should be about hips width apart. So adjust yourself if you need to and then inhale all the way up. This is a high lunge. Back leg is strong. Press that heel back, sink into it. Try to get, get it so that the shin is perpendicular to the floor. And then from here, bring your right hand to your right waist and just lean over to the right. A little bit of a side stretch. And then back to center. And then also take the hands out by your sides 
and look over the right shoulder. A little bit of a twist here. And then turn to the right, raise the arms up again, and as you exhale, straighten both legs and fold forward gently. If you have blocks, you can keep your blocks next to your mat and rest your hands on your blocks. You can also bend the front knee if it's too much for the back of the leg. Don't worry about it too much, but use the blocks if you have them. And then from here, we'll take the left leg to meet the right. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up to standing. And then exhale, back into Namaste. So one more time, we're going to inhale up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold again. This time, plant the hands. Come into plank pose. And either bring the knees down first, or come all the way down in a straight line. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Full, deep ujjayi breaths here. Check in with the back of the legs if you need to bend the knees or not. From here, take the left leg up, bend the knee, open up the hip. If you get a little pop here and there in your joints, it's totally okay. <laughs> it's actually good for you. And then square off the hips again. And as you exhale, go ahead and touch the right elbow. Inhale the leg back up, exhale, touch the left elbow, inhale the leg back up, bend the knee and as you exhale bring the left foot to land next to the left hand. Check your stance, make sure you're wide enough and then come right up into a high lunge. Make sure your legs are strong, both legs are strong. This leg should be perpendicular to the floor. Adjust your stance if you need to. Don't ever feel stuck in a pose. Back leg is strong, pressing that heel back. Very, very important. And then from here, left hand to the left hip. Lean over to the left. Full deep breaths. Stay relaxed, even though this is hard. Lift up and then come into the side twist. Breathing deeply, legs are strong. And then turn towards the front, arms up one more time. And then straighten the legs and come into a forward fold. Again, this knee can be bent if it's too much on the hamstrings. You can also have two blocks next to you to lean on. And then bring the right foot to meet the left. Inhale halfway up. Exhale fold. Inhale all the way up to standing. Exhale into Namaste. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, come into plank. Okay, so we're using the abdominals. I'm hoping that you're used to this by now. From here, we're actually gonna come into a side plank. So you're gonna bring the right hand in a little bit like it's under your face. And then you're just gonna let your feet fall over to the right and lift the left arm up overhead and breathe. And if you're shaky or trembly, don't worry, it's good. It means your muscles are firing. This is great for the core and don't let the hips sink here. Make sure that your hips are up off the ground. And then turn around, face forward. Take a breath. Bring the left hand in, turn to the other side. Stay steady if you can, but no one can see you so it doesn't matter. And 
turn to the front. And from here, just press back into downward facing dog. Couple of breaths here as a little bit of a rest. Center yourself, get yourself sort of balanced out. Lift the right leg, bend the knee, bring the right foot to land next to the right hand. From here, we're gonna bring that left leg down and we're gonna come up into this low lunge. So I want you to notice the sensations in the front of the left leg. You should be feeling a good stretch. But you don't want to just collapse into this pose. You want some strength in this leg as well as the front leg. So you're really, you're supporting your own body, but you're still getting the benefits of the stretch. Just don't let yourself flop into it. Be strong. And then from here, we're actually going to move the right foot over. Now, you can keep the foot flat on the mat, or you can come onto the outer edge here. Plant the left hand, place the right hand at the top of the right thigh, and turn and look over the right shoulder, and breathe. Turn to face the front. From here, if you are able to, you can come down a little bit further onto one elbow. You can come onto two elbows. If neither one of those appeals to you, stay up here. Or you can actually put a block, and I don't have my block nearby, so you can actually rest your elbows on a block if you would like, and just take a few breaths here. This is really great for opening up the inner legs. And then let's bring your hands back to push yourself up. We're gonna take the right foot in a little bit more. And then I'm gonna have you press your hips back and lift your toes up. And we're gonna come into another half of a forward fold. So we wanna get a little more of a hamstring stretch in here. This can be really intense. And if it is, you don't have to take the foot up. You can even keep the front leg bent a little bit more. If this is more your speed, then just do that. Always listen to the body because the pose feels different for me than it does for you. So find your edge, but don't ever push past it, not in yoga. Great, and then from here, we'll take that foot back into tabletop, curl the toes under, press back up into downward facing dog. Inhale and come forward into plank. Hold it here for a moment. Again, make sure that the collarbones are stretched, your gaze is forward. And then I'm gonna have you exhale and bring the hips all the way down so that you're coming into an upward facing dog and you're just kind of floating. Open up those shoulders. And then press back into downward facing dog again. Three full breaths. And then from here, take the left leg back, bend the knee, and bring the left leg to land next to the right. Uh, left hand, sorry. Right leg comes down to the mat. And we're gonna use the strength of our legs to press the upper body up. Low lunge right now. Hands can be down by your sides and breathe. Again, you're using the strength of your legs. You're not just collapsing into this, okay? Now we're gonna take the left foot out. And like I said, you can either keep the foot flat or bring it to the outer edge. Personally, I found that I made a little bit more progress when I was on the outer edge of the foot. Right hand plants, left hand on the left upper thigh and then turn and look over the left shoulder and breathe. Eyes are soft, always remember. 
Gaze is soft. And then turn to face the front. And if you can come down to one elbow, wonderful and amazing. And if you can't, wonderful and amazing. You can stay right here if you want to, okay? If you can bring both elbows down, good. Some people actually lay all the way flat. Some people. <laughs> And just use the breath to focus on and also your body should be sort of relaxing into the pose so that your exhales are bringing you just a little bit more deeply into the pose let your body let you in one breath at a time And then let's slowly come out of this. Bring that left foot in towards the center. Press the hips back and come into your half split. Just come down as far as you can comfortably go. Like I said, that front leg, the knee can be bent. Be mindful of your hamstrings. Not everybody has loose hands. In fact, I think most people have tight hamstrings. A lot of that is just from sitting in ordinary chairs. And then let's go ahead and come out of this. Press back up into downward facing dog. And we're going to come forward into plank and we're going to do another little round of vinyasa. So either knees down first or come forward all the way down. Inhale into Chitthanga. Exhale into Downward Facing Dog. And then from here, walk the feet forward towards the hands. Take your time. Keep the feet hips width apart. Bend the knees here for sure. <laughs> Even if your belly comes all the way to the thighs, that's okay. And then just hang. A couple of ways you can do this. This is called ragdoll. So if you want, you can take elbows and opposite hands and then just let go of everything. You can even swing the body around a little bit. Hopefully you'll feel a little bit like a piece of seaweed. So you don't have to swing, but the swinging actually helps you to loosen up the upper body. Maybe shake your head, say yes and no. Check in with the neck. Are you really letting go of the neck? I think you'd be surprised. And just enjoy. And then bring your hands to the mat and then to the ankles. Walk the hands up the legs and we're going to come up to standing. From here, we're going to take a wide-legged stance on the mat. I would say fairly wide. I mean, everybody's body is different, so you can see that my feet are probably lining up with my wrists or my hands. So the feet are flat, and you want to actually bring the toes in just a little bit. Okay? Great. And then from here, we're going to inhale up. And then exhale, fold forward. Hands come flat to the mat. We're going to flat back, inhale. And then exhale and fold. And you can walk the hands underneath the legs in the other direction and just let the head fall forward and breathe. Now this is another pose where if your legs are very tight and this is uncomfortable, just give yourself a little micro bend in the knees. I also want you to focus on the feet for a moment and make sure that you're pressing evenly through the feet. We tend to lean towards the inside of the foot in this pose, but why don't you put a little bit of weight on the outside edge of the foot as well. 
and then go ahead and walk the hands forward a little bit and then take if you're mirroring me your right hand and reach over and grab the left shin and then fold the right arm sorry the left arm will crawl forward and when your head is hanging down you should be able to look under that arm and then you're going to take the arm and walk it in the opposite direction this is a pretty intense twist but it feels really good as long as you're not going too far and this is also again a pose where the knees can be slightly bent if it makes it more accessible for you full deep breaths and slowly start to make your way out and we'll switch sides so for you that's left hand on the right shin and then the right arm crawling forward and over towards the center while the head just hangs loose and is looking under the arm full deep breaths Use your ujjayi breath if you remember. You can bring it back in at any time. And then slowly start to release and bring yourself back to center. Press the feet into the mat and bring your hands to your hips as you come halfway up. And then exhale. And then press all the way up to standing. This time we're gonna take the hands behind the back, clasp the hands. Bring the arms straight so that you're lifting the shoulders as you inhale, bending forward as you exhale. Breathe. Again, bend the knees slightly. Bring your hands to the lower back and then release the clasp and then slowly come up to standing, taking your time. If you come up too fast, you can get dizzy, so just be mindful of that. Now take the feet out and bring the hands in front of the heart and come into what we call goddess pose. You're gonna feel a little bit in here and that's okay. You can also take the hands to the upper thighs, press into the thighs, don't sink into the shoulders, elongate the spine. Pressing the knees away from each other basically and then bring your hands back to center come up bring the feet in a little bit we're going to come down to a squat this is balasana you might need to adjust however you need to if this pose is not one of your favorites you can have a block right here and you can literally sit on the block there are a lot of different ways to get this pose and to make it work for you and from here, breathe. And if, regardless of whether you're on the block or not, elbows are on the insides of the legs and you're really actually pressing them apart. And this is a great stretch for the inner groin muscles, which are hard to get to. And then go ahead and release and let's gracefully come to, to the earth. I'm gonna move the mic. Bring your legs out in front. Move the flesh away from the sit bones. Inhale the arms up overhead, engage both legs here, don't just flop them, and then fold forward, hinging at the hips. Use your ujjayi breath, or just breathe slowly and deeply here. While you're breathing, I'm just going to remind you, this is again, you can have a micro bend in the knees. If you'd like, you can even roll up a towel and have the towel underneath your knees. That's an option too. Or you can just bend them the way that they are and come forward. And then from here, bring your hands to the side of each leg and just walk yourself back up. So if you're mirroring, you're gonna take your left leg and cross it over the right. Again, both feet are engaged. So the left foot is pressing into the mat right foot toes are up towards the ceiling from here you're going to go ahead and hug the knee with the opposite arm and then turn and look over your left shoulder as you inhale lift the chest to straighten the spine and as you exhale
twist. Don't forget this foot. Make sure it is engaged. On your next exhale, go ahead and turn towards the front of the mat and switch sides. Right leg crosses left, hug the knee with the opposite arm, and then bring your right arm behind you to keep you steady. The palm should be flat if you can reach. Everyone's body is different. If you can't reach flat, you can use your fingertips, okay? And then inhale and lift the chest. Exhale, look over the shoulder and breathe. Only go as far as you can comfortably go. There's absolutely no need to push or force or strain. On your next exhale, turn back towards the front. Bring both feet flat to the mat. And this time I'm going to have you take the feet up. We're going to come into Navasana. So the hands can be behind the thighs. And you're just going to hold this. You're going to work your abdominals here. And you can take the legs straight if you're comfortable with that. Breathe. Smile. <laughs> and then release. From here, we're going to come to the mat. We're going to come down to a laying position. We're going to bring the right knee in towards the chest. And then release and bring the left knee in towards the chest. Take the left foot to the mat, cross the right ankle over the left upper thigh, bring the thigh in towards the body, clasp your hands behind the left thigh, both feet are engaged and you're coming in towards the chest. Now the right elbow can be hooked against the right knee, pressing the knee away as the left leg comes in. You will definitely feel an intense outer hip stretch in this pose. Breathe. If it's too intense, let go a little bit. There's no need to force or push ever. You want to find your edge, but it should feel good. And then go ahead and release and switch sides. So left ankle comes to upper left, upper right thigh, bringing the right leg in. Both feet are engaged. One side you will notice is different than the other. If you can hook the left elbow into the left upper thigh so you can push the knee away from you, go for it. If it's too much, don't worry about it. Make sure both feet are engaged though, meaning flexed, so that you can protect the joints. If you're using your ujjayi breath, don't forget about it. Make sure you're breathing fully and deeply in every pose. If you get distracted or anything, always just come back to the breath. And go ahead and release. Hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little rock back and forth. And then let's come into Shavasana. So legs are outstretched, shoulder blades are down the back, arms are outstretched. You feel like a star. You are a star, by the way. And <laughs> palms should be facing the ceiling, eyes closed. Let go of all of the effort. Let go of your ujjayi breath. Let go of any tension in the muscles. Close your eyes and just be here. If you'd like to pause so you can take a longer Shavasana, please pause now 
because I'm going to wrap it up in a moment. So after Shavasana, we're just going to come back up to sitting. And we put our hands in front of the heart so that we can officially wrap up the practice. I thank you for practicing with me. And may the long times sun shine upon you. All love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way home. Namaste. I hope you enjoyed your practice.